So here's the update on the 08 F-150 543 valve. Uh, the warranty company is actually sticking the customer with a huge portion of the bill. And the customer is going to have to come out of pocket like $3,500 for teardown, diagnosis, and everything else. And the warranty company said they're, they're not, uh, even though they can't find him at fault for anything, um, they are not going to pay for a huge portion of the repair. Uh, so this used engine did come in. And it looks like somebody has previously regasketed it, um, did stuff like oil pan, rear main. Uh, as I pulled that engine out, I noticed that this actually has a new torque converter in it. So somebody has put a new torque converter in this uh, transmission before and possibly a used transmission. I don't know previously. This engine overall is in better shape. Like the bolts and everything aren't completely rotten like the engine that came out of his truck. Um, I did notice the exhaust manifolds look like trash on this, so I'm going to go ahead and get those replaced and try to fit it in the bill so there's no extra money to anybody. Uh, we just can't let it go with these manifolds the way it is, and I'd rather do these manifolds out of the vehicle than in the vehicle. A lot of the hose, hoses just fucking, they just, they're trash. Excuse my mouth, I just let that slip because I'm disgusted with the vacuum hoses, the cooling hoses look like trash. I'm going to go ahead and do plugs while I'm here as well so they, we don't have to end up doing that in chassis. Um, just do it all while it's out of the vehicle and uh, put like new intake manifold gaskets on it, throttle body gasket, clean the throttle body. Do the stuff that I know needs to be done going back together instead of uh, leaving this guy hanging with it. Uh, one thing I don't like is I don't like the way they put that water pump on there. They did use some gray RTV. You know, it seems like it's sealed and it hasn't leaked. I'll have to make that decision tomorrow on whether or not I'm going to do the water pump as well. I can leave that up to the customer. Um, overall, it doesn't look like a bad engine. It looks like the overall condition of this engine is better than the one that came out of his truck, but he does have better manifolds on that one with newer bolts and studs. Uh, I have to try to decide tomorrow where, where I'm going to go with everything. You know, I don't want this guy to have to deal with any problems once he leaves here and say, well, this is leaking or that's leaking. Do it now while it's out. Try to fit it in the, in the bill. Be fair to the customer. Take care of him. Even eat some of the money because of what this guy's been through with this aftermarket like warranty company that he bought this vehicle from on a used car dealer he paid way too much for this and he likes the truck unfortunately he's in it locked in it financed it and uh in way too much and i think he's going to end up coming out of pocket about thirty five hundred dollars and the warranty company is going to end up paying the rest so it's kind of a tough situation to be in right now i'm trying to do the right thing by the customer uh, to make him um, not have to worry as much as as he has had to worry it's we're just trying to do the right thing here, and um, I did I did consider maybe even pulling it up, putting it on the, the cherry picker, resealing the trans while I'm there again. Just going to touch base with the customer and see exactly how far he wants us to go. I know there's some things I'm going to do. Um, just just all depends on where, where, where tomorrow goes and exactly how we're going to deal with all this stuff. It's pretty sad that this aftermarket warranty company that this guy's paying for is just completely shit the bed on on helping him out and stuck him with such a huge portion of what they have said that they are supposed to cover. So that's the update on the 543 valve. I uh, was in the middle of doing so many different things today and then and finally the last like three or four hours I was like, look, I got to get that engine out of there. I got to get it out, get it drained, um, start to pull the wiring harness and stuff off of this, inspect this engine, see what's broken. There were some things that I seen broken that came from uh, the yard that actually gave, gave us this, the cam sensor's broken, so I'm going to have to see if I can come up with a cam sensor, maybe the original one that was on the engine. I don't think I liked the way the original one looked that was on the engine because they kind of buggered it up and tied into it with some kind of remote start stuff, and I think they ended up cracking around the cam sensor. So I'll definitely get that. Intake manifold gaskets, either exhaust manifold gaskets and studs, but I may have to throw manifolds in there as well. It just all depends. I'm going to take a true bar and stick across it and see how bad they are. I'd like to go back with Ford metal gaskets instead of the aftermarket mushy stuff. I just really don't like that. I'm just not a huge fan of it. They always end up leaking about a year later where the Ford metal ones that you get, the two-piece design that's, that they go to the front two runners and then the back two runners, um, they seem to work and they, they don't really blow out for years. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. I wanted to update you guys with the 08543 valve. Uh, engine replacement I appreciate y'all and for those of you that are new that don't know why um, the timing chain was slapping the tensioner was blown out the driver side uh, the passenger tensioner was blown out and the guide on that side was was broken on the other side 
the tensioner gasket was blown out, but the guy wasn't broken yet. The chain was slapping a little bit, and then they asked for me to remove the front cover so they could see if the guy's been keeping up on, on his maintenance, and it actually looks fairly clean inside the engine, so he has been keeping up on his maintenance. That's good there. So that was a good, good flag for him that they were at least going to help um, cover the repair. And then the adjuster came out and said, remove the cam caps. I removed the cam caps, and there's a lot of scoring inside these cams. They're just tore up. And he was like, nah, we're not going to pay for uh, a bunch of replacement on something that's going to end up failing anyway. Let's just give you a new engine that um, has some kind of, like, I don't know, 90-day or one-year warranty on it or something used. We'll put a used engine in it, but we don't want you repairing that engine that's already in there. And they call the shots. The scoring on this side, not as bad. On this side, really, really bad, which that's typical with these because of how oil flows. If you don't know how oil flows, it goes through the pickup tube down here into the pump, from the pump, into the outside of the filter, through the center of the filter. After it's been filtered through the pleats, it goes back up and travels up the driver's side of this engine. It goes into the driver's side cylinder head first. That's why it gets applied oil first, and that's why the tensioner on this side is the last one to blow out. Transfers across, across the block to the back of the engine, up the back of the head, and then it transfers back forward and then back down to this tensioner on this side. That's why this tensioner blows out uh, because of lack of oil, uh, it not being supplied, uh, sufficient oil supply. So when guys go back together, that's why they put these high volume oil pumps in here to really try to move um, some more oil through this. And a lot of people think high volume oil pump means higher pressure, and that's not what that means. High volume oil pump means higher flow, which the higher flow rate through the restrictions of the engine create pressure. Restriction of an engine creates pressure a pump and prime mover moves volume of oil. The restrictions in the engine create the pressure. The pump moves the volume of oil. That's how that works. And this is a uh, pretty terrible oil flow design in uh, modular engines like this because of uh, the way it's routed. From the sump, through the pickup tube, into the pump, from the pump, into the outside of the filter, through the center of the filter, up the driver's side, into the cylinder head here, crosses over, goes to the back, to the back of the uh, of the back of the passenger side cylinder head up supplies this and then comes back down here to supply the tensioner last right so that's kind of a faulty design if one, one of the characteristics if you look at this uh, engine you'll see that one side is lighter than the other you notice how this side is more of a lighter golden color and this side is more of a brownish golden color because this side is the side that gets supplied with pcv so it's always going to be darker on this side than it is on this side so a lot of that blow by and waste and stuff is coming back through this side not in this side. So, some characteristics of the 543 valve, and um, yeah, that's it. That's the update on the 01 F150 543 valve engine replacement. Thanks, guys.